monochrome Bitcoin ETF provides investors with a regulated pathway into the cryptocurrency market. When you're ready to take your investments to the next level, you might want to consider monochrome. Hello and welcome to The Global View on this Tuesday. I'm Andrew Gagan. Good to have you with us here at AusBiz. Let's check what happened overnight. Global markets mostly higher despite the absence of market moving news. Investors on Wall Street waiting on US inflation data out later this week. The Dow rallied to a one month high while the Nasdaq fell sharply as investors rotated out of AI link stocks and added some undervalued stocks to their portfolios. Nvidia fell heavily to be down for a third session with investors taking profits after it rose last week to become the world's most valuable company. Other chip stocks including US shares of Taiwan Semiconductor, Broadcom, Marvel Technology, Qualcomm all dropped. And both Apple and Meta rose on a report that Meta has discussed integrating its generative AI model into Apple's recently announced AI system for iPhones. And RxO shares jumped higher on plans to buy Coyote Logistics from UPS for $1 billion. Well, the latest read on US manufacturing from the Dallas Fed was close to expectation, but it remains firmly in contraction. But pricing and future output expectations were firmer. San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly has offered further clues into the timing of interest rate cuts, saying, I do think that preemptive cutting is something that you do when you see risks. But right now, what I see is a strong labour market that's coming to balance. Well, US Treasury yields a little changed ahead of this week's economic and inflation data, which may help determine the timing of those cuts. The 10-year was down 25 basis points so far this month. It's at 4.25% and the two-year at 4.73. And the US dollar has slipped from an eight-week high against the yen, the Aussie, trading at 66.5 US cents. All right, let's catch up with what is moving markets stateside. Steve Sosnick is the Chief Market Strategist at Interactive Brokers. He joins us now. Steve, very good for our weekly chat on Tuesday, Monday night, your time. And who would have thought NVIDIA doesn't only go in one direction? Yeah, good morning, Andrew. Isn't that funny? We, You know, if you'd asked me, you know, would it be possible for NVIDIA to fall about six, you know, over 6% uh, in a day and actually, you know, fall about 13% in about a week, top to bottom. Um, and yet the market would really be, the, the broader market, the S&P 500, would really be more or less, uh, you know, modestly down. I would have thought that was impossible. Throw in the, the risk-off move that we saw in Bitcoin as well today, which was also down about 6.5%, depending on when you measure the start and finish. Um, and you definitely saw money flowing out of you know the riskier sectors of the market, um, the good thing was though it flowed into the less risky stocks as you'd alluded to uh, earlier. Um, so we did see you know some good rotation. We saw advances outpacing decliners, um, despite the downdraft you know largely caused by Nvidia and friends. And so it was an interesting session today. We'll see how much of that is quarter end window dressing and how much of it is, you know, sort of a real rebalancing as the as the t- weeks go on. Yeah, as you point to, obviously, as you head towards the end of the quarter. So there is a lot of uh, portfolio positioning taking place there. But what we're seeing with NVIDIA, given how far it has run, is the market now perhaps looking for an excuse to, well, certainly take profits. You know, I never think you should have an excuse to take profits. I think the excuse to take profits is to you know, when you've become sort of overweighted in one particular stock or another, you know, I, I know you want to let your winners ride. But I think in the case of a lot of institutional portfolios, they were becoming actually quite overweighted um, in some of these leading stocks, not because of anything they necessarily did. But, you know, maybe at the start of the quarter, they had a relatively normal market weighting in some of them. And as these stocks performed so spectacularly, they ended up overweighted in them. And so you may be seeing a bit of rebalancing that that's following through from that. Um, you know, a little interesting to me to see the the Russell 2000 up, uh, you know, 50 basis points or so today, about a half a percent or so. That was a that was a bit of a surprise because the conditions really aren't there for small caps to lead. But in terms of the uh, the rotation from 
you know, one set of large caps that have outperformed dramatically to another set that has underperformed, that that's sort of fitting with the with the rebalancing ahead of the quarter end theme. Steve, I, I noted there not a lot of news to trade on in that past session, but we do have potentially market moving data coming up later in the week. We've got the GDP read, but more importantly, that that read on inflation with the core PCE deflator. What um, how pivotal will that be, do you think? You know, I think these are the type of numbers that, you know, you showed um, San Francisco Fed President Daly's comments. She's among the more um, dovish members of, of the Fed. Um, but, you know, I think what you see here is the, if the Fed is going to be data dependent, well, this is exactly the sort of data they need to depend on. Um, you know, is the economy humming along as they expect? Well, not particularly. Uh, the first read on first quarter GDP was one point. 3%. Now they're kind of expecting it to be revised up to 1.4%. That's still not a rip-roaring economy, but it's also not an economy in contraction. Um, and so we'll see how the markets take that if there's, you know, if there's some deviation from those, not from those expectations. And then, of course, the core PCE is really the important one. Uh, you know, we're looking for, the market's really looking for a, de a decrease in overall in, in month over month core PCE, uh, which would bring us down to a 26 uh, annualized run rate, which is getting pretty close to, you know, the Fed's target. So, you know, again, I think anything that sort of detracts from that will be taken very negatively. Um, I do think if, you know, the numbers, I would have said if the numbers in, in line, we would just take it in stride. But uh, we, we've seen that the market has a tendency to, to, to jump uh, on the slightest provocation. So uh, you really could get some volatility heading into the end of the week, even if there's not a lot of catalysts other than the stocks we mentioned, um, you know, right now. And Steve, dare I say, the other event happening this week is on the political front with the first debate, presidential debate between uh, Trump and Biden. How do you think the market is going to take a look at it? I mean, is that is there any potential for movement there? Is it, or is it really just a bit of a, a look and see and a bit of entertainment? <laughs> um. You know, the, the, no one's really happy about this event that's happening on Thursday. It, 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 it's sort of um, it's super consequential, potentially, because the, you know, either one of them, you know, is prone to gaffes. Um, you know, I, I think the bar is a little bit lower right now for Biden, because I think, uh, you know, the Trump campaign has spent so much time per portraying him as, you know, feeble guy who can't stand stand straight and. Uh, you know, meanwhile, you know, you know, Trump's rhetoric is a bit unhinged, um, you know, about electric batteries and sharks and all kinds of other naughty stuff. So who knows what's going to come out of this? The the debates four years ago were, you know, were particularly were a bit of, you know, maniacal in their own ways. And we'll see what happens this time. I, I think, you know, uh, as a citizen of the United States, I'd like to see the uh, the debate go off without a hitch. Um, realistically, though. You know, this is this is like watching, you know, daredevils in, in their own way and just sort of like hoping there's not a crash. <laughs> yeah. um, so it can influence the market if one of them if one of them really goes off the rails. Yeah. Well, as I said, uh, certainly has the uh, the hallmarks have been very entertaining. However, it is all around personality at the moment. When are we going to focus on the policy difference there, do you think? theory, we should be doing that already. I think the policy differences are, are immense. Um, it's pretty clear at this point that, um, you know, Trump has his devoted followers, you know, who are essentially unshakable. Um, you know, I think a lot of uh, very high net worth individuals have flocked to his side because ultimately when it comes down to it, um, very rich people really don't like paying taxes and Trump has promised them um, less regulation and, 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 less, and less taxes. Um, on the other hand, you know, on the social issues, a lot of the stuff that Biden is saying is, is much more popular. I just I just, you know, heard a news report basically in, you know, because abortion rights were thrown back to the states um, in certain states where where reproductive rights are on the ballot. Uh, they're expecting a huge turnout of, of women who vote Democratic. So I don't know what to make of it because we should be paying paying attention to these policy differences, which are enormous. But again, one of the candidates is, has, has spent his life being all about style over substance. Um, and so I think that's, that's where a lot of the analysis tends to end up.
Steve, we uh, look forward to that and uh, obviously with the data too, something a little more solid to trade on. Thanks so much for joining us from Interactive Brokers. My pleasure, Andrew. Talk to you soon. All right, let's just uh, take a quick look at where we're likely to get going. Uh, given the falls we had yesterday, we're looking to bounce back this morning. Spy futures indicating uh, perhaps a half a percent higher or thereabouts as we get going. And uh, just um, got a bit of company news to consider um, this morning. But uh, And we've also got a read on uh, consumer confidence for the month from Westpac and the Melbourne Institute. All right, stay with us because the open is just a couple of minutes away.